Hello, Craft Our House followers. Today we're going to be learning how to make these cute, trendy, gemstone wrapped rings. I just love how the wire is wrapped around that gemstone, making it look all cute and nestled in there. So, a few things that we're going to be working with today. I did grab a couple different styles of um, 8 millimeter gemstones from our table. I just, there's so many colors to choose from. I wasn't really sure what color I'm going to work with today. And then I have this ring mandrel from Beadalon. It only goes from s size 4 to size 10. I am a size 10 and I tend to have a larger finger for a woman. Um, but we do have a larger mandrel for those who have larger fingers. And then I have good old flush cutters always that chain nose pliers and then I'm going to be showing off this um, tool from Beadalon. It is a three nylon roller wire straightener. It's really great when you have longer pieces of wire you're working with. And then of course the wire. I'm going to be using a 20 gauge wire today. I have just gold and silver I'm showing off but you can easily use rose gold to make a really elegant piece with some flush or with some um, faceted beads or we have this more antique bronze that would look awesome with a more natural colored stone as well. So let's get started. So I'm going to go ahead and use this gold so you can see it a little bit better up against this ring mandrel and I'm going to go ahead and I need about for my size 10 finger about 16 inches and I'm just going to take that flush cutter making sure this flush flat side is going to be on the side of the wire I want to keep. Okay. And now, as you guys can see, this guy is all bent up. I can even kind of bend them a little bit more to show this a little bit. But it's really hard to work with wire when it's not straight, especially initially. So. I go ahead and take this and I just start out one of the ends, just want enough to hold, pull the wire. You're going to put your wire in there and fold the, these rollers around it. And then you're just going to go ahead and pull this wire on through. So it's not fully straight, I'll probably do it one more time, but look at that. I can't even hold it all into the screen. Again, I'm going to just put that wire in there and pull through. And I am holding this uh, roller pretty snug. Okay, I'm going to just go through that end that I was holding, making sure that's nice and straight as well. If you have a bunch of kinks, it will make it really hard to put that bead on. So I'm going to go ahead and put my wire on the ring size I have, and then I want to make sure I have about two to three inches of wire that's going to be kicked out and we're going to use this right away after we form our um, ring band and it's going to help secure our ring band where we need it. So let's go ahead and we're going to wrap around our mandrel two times. So when I say two times, on the back side you'll see there are two wires. Let's separate those two wires. And then on the top, you will have, it will look like three, um, but those will all get used in the wrapping of that gemstone. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this off the mandrel. And time to get that chain nose plier out. So I'm going to go ahead and make a 90 degree angle. And then I want to make another 90 degree angle to go ahead and help me wrap this wire around this ring band, the two two rings or the two wires that create the ring band. I'm gonna wrap around with that three to two inch wire. This I've found just everybody does things differently, but I have found when I do this, I'm able to um, make sure my band isn't getting formed all wonky on me and it stays put. So I wrap around three times. Um, you can wrap around once and then decide what you want later as well. 
And then that longer strand that we have, we're gonna be putting the bead on it, but I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna make a 90 degree angle um, coming off that ring band. And then I'm gonna kinda guess when I put the bead on where the bottom of it in the hole is. So where that hole is, I wanna just help the bead find its little home. So I'm gonna make another 90 degree angle. And I will show you what I mean by its home. See how it just gets snug right up in there? So I did a 90 degree angle and then a 90 degree angle through the bead. And then I want to do another 90 degree angle with the wire that's coming out of the bead, but I want it to come on this opposite side of the ring band. So. You can, again, use your pliers or your hands, whichever you want. And then we're gonna go underneath. I'm gonna go underneath and then wrap right back to where you were so that bead is nice and secure. And this is where you'll go ahead and slide it right back on that mandrel. And I go ahead and hold the sides of it and I'm just gonna go ahead and you're gonna take that wire, wrap it around the base, and come on up your bead. Now, you can make this nest as large as you want, or as small as you want. The only thing that I suggest is making sure you're coming up high enough and covering where the wires come into your bead so you don't see that. And then you wanna make sure that you are wrapping it back down to be able to do some more loops on the side here. Because that's going to be how you secure this. Otherwise, your wire isn't fully secure. It's just going to be a loose. And we don't want your nice, cute little nest to come undone. Having a hard time getting this right where I want it to go. Okay, now I'm going to come on down. So I wrapped it the way I want it, and I'm just going to go ahead and pull this off. So I have the one side that has a three on it, and I'm going to go ahead and form three on this side, the other side of the ring. So I'm just going to wrap underneath that ring band, and I'm just going to do that three times. I do like to use my pliers, but as you can see, you can use your hands. Um, the pliers do make it where you can pull that wire just a tad tire, making sure it's really secure. Okay, so I have it wrapped around three times. Oops, one more actually. Wasn't quite. You can see how those are kind of spread out. I can just use my pliers to push those in together or push them like this. And then I kind of have these out here. They're not right up against the ring like I want. And I can do the same thing with it. Just take my pliers and push the wire on up. Okay, I think I'm gonna go under one more time because I want to cut these the same. Again, if you leave the access here, like you can end up putting a couple more wraps of wire on your ring band if you want. Um, I just like the way the three look. So I'm gonna go ahead and take those flush cutters. I'm gonna make sure that access wire is cut off. I want that flush side to be the ring side. And either angle down or cover up whatever you're wire is access so it doesn't come up and hit somebody in the eye. And then I just go ahead and take those pliers again and make sure that wire that I cut that last little piece is actually fully wrapped around and nice and snug. Okay, and there you go. I mean, I'll show you the bottom of that. Um, got formed a nice little nest It's very all my bead is covered on the side and then on up to the top 
Now, let's say my ring got a little crushed and it's more oval. I can just go ahead, slip that back on that mandrel, just kind of form it again. And there I go, I got it nice and round again. And now I got a cute little ring to wear. Thank you for following and happy crafting.